Hey guys, so today I'm here with a video detailing my thoughts on Windows 8. So the Microsoft Build Conference just wrapped up and there's showed a lot of really cool new stuff with Windows 8 and overall I'm really quite impressed. Now going into it, there's a lot of questions I had about Windows 8, you know, what about the interface, how is it going to work, this, that, this, that, um, but a lot of my questions have been answered and there's also some really cool things that they have added. So let's go ahead and go over some of the things that really stood out to me. So the number one thing was the interface, and that was the big thing that I was worried about. You know, of course, you know, Windows has had a fairly similar interface ever since Windows 95. You know, you have your taskbar, you have a window, you know, you hit your Windows key, you can pull up the menu, you have your desktop. All this stuff has been pretty typical. It hasn't really changed much ever since then. However, with Windows 8, there's an all-new interface called the Metro UI. You guys will probably be familiar with the Metro UI. It first came out on the Zune HD a few years back, and it is on all the Windows Phone 7 devices that are available on the market right now. Uh, personally, I'm a big fan of it. I like the you know, the kind of the fonts and you know the way it kind of has transitions and everything. It's a very nice looking interface, and I do like it for coming over to Windows and you know, being able to be on your computers and everything. However, my main concern with it is that it's really made as a touch screen, so maybe be able to tap it to you know to fly between the different pages and all that kind of stuff to swipe up your menus and all that kind of stuff that's really what it is made for and while they didn't really show anything that you know just blew my mind just made me go oh that's absolutely made for keyboard and mouse uh, it will should work just fine for keyboards and mouse however the thing I really do wanna uh, well the thing that didn't really change my mind at all about is that the Metro U interface is still going to be mostly focused towards tablets as well as computers with touch screens which of course may get a little bit more popular but I know for the time being, I don't see myself getting away from the keyboard and mouse. Now, one of the most important things that I do want to you know, stress, because I have a lot of people you know, asking questions before, is that there are going to be two UIs in Windows. And it's a little confusing, but let me go ahead and try to explain. So, normally, there's going to be the Metro UI, which, of course, is, mo like I said, mostly towards you know, touch screens and that kind of stuff, although you can navigate it with a mouse and keyboard without any major problems. However, that's not the only interface. If you want, you can switch over to the standard Windows 7 style interface, where you still have you know, your desktop, your icons, all that kind of stuff. It's going to work very, very similarly. Now, the way that they're going to be able to change it is you can do it with a keyboard shortcut or whatever. You can change in between these inter uh, really, really quite simply. It's not like you have to you know, shut your computer off or anything. Both are running at the exact same time. So I think it's going to be the best of both worlds. If you want to just you know, continue using Windows like you use you know, with Windows 7, you can certainly do that. But if you have a tablet or you want to use the Metro uh, UI, it's not going to be a problem. So big thumbs up to Microsoft there. I think they did a good job. Now another thing is what kind of you know compatibility and all that kind of stuff that Windows 8 is going to have. Well, it will have, be compatible with pretty much any computer that's running Windows 7, and of course, continuing on with that, pretty much any computer that ran Windows Vista either should be compatible with Windows 8. So it's going to be really easy on system resources. In fact, they showed it was running really, really quite easily on a one gigabyte netbook. So if you can run on that; it should be able to run pretty well on anything. Now, one thing that also kind of jumped out at me while I was watching it was that they were talking about, you know, like how fast it is and how speedy. And if you look at the video, you'll see that, you know, everything just happens fast. You know, the transitions, everything is really crisp. There's no stutter. There's no lag. And of course, it was theirs. You know, it's not like, you know, they were using, you know, all the machines they had tried and everything. So, you know, it's not a perfect, you know, example. But from what we do know, it actually, there is a pretty good reason why it should run pretty smooth. And that's because it pretty much attaches across the board into your GPU. So you're not familiar, most of your, you know, your CPU and all that kind of stuff, what runs your computer, it just run off your CPU. So if you, know, if you have a little bit of lag or bottlenecks or whatever, you know, it's just going to be basically totally dependent on your CPU. However, all computers have GPUs. Which is typically used to be used for you know just doing like graphics and you know like running your desktop a little bit, but for most part you know gaming and that kind of thing. However, the entire UI is going to be focused on using your GPU. So just put it really simply, it's going to be running pretty much better across the board, which is good. It's good that they're tapping into all the parts that they can on your computer to make it run the best that it can. Uh, now the last thing I wanted to talk about was the apps. Now, one thing that's been a problem for Windows users for a very long time, that you know, it's a little bit better on Mac and Linux in my opinion, is downloading apps, programs, whatever you want to call them. Uh, now, of course, you know, not having an app store, that was never a big deal to me, but the thing is, there are of course lots of viruses, there are also kind of lots of crapware, so you, know, you download a program, it installs you know, toolbars, or installs this or that, and a lot of times that's not really what you want, and they become very difficult to uninstall, and it's just, it's just a big mess. However, well, with Windows 8, you should still be able to download and, you know, just do it, you know, you can, you know, install stuff by yourself, of course. Uh, but in addition, there also will be the Windows App Store. And what the Windows App Store is all about is the very similar experience to the Apple App Store, of course, the iPhone, the iPad, and the Mac App Store, of course, as well. Now, what really sets them apart is not so much the fact, you know, that they're wildly different. 
Of course, they both have a vetting process where you know you submit apps. If you're a developer, you submit apps. They'll go through your app, and you know, assuming it goes and makes it through, and you, know, you don't have any major problems that will be put onto the Windows App Store. But one of the biggest things, but for me, is it's just going to help cut down on the crap, on you know, just the kind of stuff that you don't really want. Now, while they didn't go exactly in depth into the rules, from what I would have to imagine, Microsoft has got to be more lenient than Apple, allow more different kinds of apps available without you know really restricting it, like a lot of the kinds of silly things that Apple does deny on their app stores. So what I'm really hoping for is that it really does become the go-to place. You don't have to go, you know, download these things here and there and everything. You can just download it there. You know that it's going to be secure. That they've you know gone over it. It at least gives you a little bit of security so that you know all of a sudden find you know pop-ups and spyware and stuff, which does happen from time to time on Windows. Uh, and anyway, guys, that's going to be about it for my major things. There were some other things that jumped out at me, like the Windows Live integration and just the general overall, you know, just the look and feel of it. But uh, that's going to be about it. I do want to keep this video fairly brief. If you guys are interested in checking out Windows 8 for yourself, it will go live tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. I'll have a link in the description so if you guys want to check it out. Of course, as soon as I can, I will get a hands-on of it and you know give you guys my full thoughts and opinions. If you guys enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to give it a like. And if you're interested in seeing more Windows 8 videos as it comes out and as you know new things are announced, definitely be sure to subscribe to the channel.